Well, it's Grom time on the channel once again, and even though we don't really see this bike that often, it seems like the last few times at the very least, it's been drivetrain related, and today is no different. Last time we saw this, we replaced the chain tensioners, which have been working perfectly fine, but now it's the actual chain and sprockets themselves. That's right, I think it's time to finally replace my chain and my sprockets because they are getting really worn out. This is a wear item, but it's not as frequent as other wear items that you would normally expect with bikes, something like an oil change or air filter cleaning and all that stuff where it's done multiple times a year. But this one, it's only done a few thousand miles or so and can be forgotten at times. Times. and I think this one has overstayed its welcome. When we did the chain adjusters last time, I put everything back together and made sure that the clearances were good and that the chain had enough slack. But then after a few rides, it was obvious that the chain was starting to get really floppy and like, dangerously loose and even after lubing it it was tight in some areas and loose in some other areas depending on how you spun the wheel which to me I think indicates that some of the links in the chain are pretty worn out and maybe even stuck which is definitely a bad thing so all of that getting replaced today. So of course this requires complete disassembly of the rear end. We're gonna put this up on a stand, get the wheel off, get the chain off, and take the front sprocket off. So you know what that means. Looks like it's time for a video montage. Because who's got the time as he works in the garage? We gotta move this along, so we'll pace it with the song. Retention is key, and I want the algorithm to like me. Well, that would have been a lot easier had I taken the chain off first and then gone with the wheel and the axle. That's your PSA for today. Also, let's take a look at the chain that I just took off and right there you can see there's a kink. And this is after everything was lubed up and I did one ride on it. So this chain is definitely 100% shot. You can actually hear the wear, listen to that. This thing is rattling side to side. That's because it's so worn out that it's actually creating space in the links where there shouldn't be. So now I wanna take some time to show you the parts that I'm gonna be replacing this with and time to thank today's sponsor, me, because I bought these myself. But I will shout out the company anyway. I got a full sprocket and chain kit from Sprocket Center. I really like Sprocket Center because they have the full kits. They're pretty inexpensive. They're like 80 something dollars for the full kit. And not only that, but it comes in a 428 conversion kit. So when I say 428 kit, what I basically mean is that not just the chain, but the sprockets too are thicker. And thicker holds up better because the stock chain on a Honda Grom is 420, which is a smaller number, therefore a smaller width, smaller pitch, smaller components all the way around. And so what I found when I originally got this bike and had the stock chain and then started replacing that with regular sized 420 parts, that that stuff would wear out really quickly. And so with thicker gears, even though I don't have something like a big bore, a high compression piston in this, it's just stock bore, I can still take advantage of the fact that these will wear out a lot less and last a lot longer. The other reason why I like Sprocket Center is because you can choose what size teeth you have on the front and the rear. Stock gearing, I think, is 34 in the rear and then 15 in the front and the most common swap which I highly recommend I've mentioned this many times before is going one tooth down in the front so this is a 14 and you can also change the rear if you want as well but I've found that the stock 34 tooth is just fine so that's what I got and then as far as chain goes this is a DID heavy duty chain so nothing too special about this but again this is thicker this is much more robust than any 420 chain you would be putting on this bike sound test real quick Absolutely nothing, no rattle in this thing at all. This is what your chain should sound like, or not sound like. Here's another test that you can do to show just how worn or unworn your chain is. This is the new one, and we laid it down flat and just bent it to the side here. So you can see there is a bit of a curve right here. There is some clearances that they have to deal with, but overall it's, for the most part, straight. Then if we do the same to our old chain that we're replacing, again, line that up nice and flat here and then bend it, Holy cow, look at that. That is a really worn out chain. That means there's so much gap in between all of these little wheels right here that it can flex that much. That's why it's so rattly. 
That's why it's toast. So let's keep taking stuff off so we can put new stuff on, starting with the rear sprocket. As you can see here, this was a 428 as well, and so we're replacing it with basically the same thing. You can also see that this is pretty worn out just like the chain is. It was put on at the same time, and it's always a good rule of thumb to replace your sprockets the same time you're replacing your chain. So we'll take off those bolts, pull the old sprocket off, put the new one on, and make sure that those are torqued appropriately. That's very important. Torque spec is 22 foot-pounds. Moving on to the front sprocket, we're gonna slide that sprocket it onto the spline, slide the locking plate on as well, line up the bolt holes and tighten it down. The camera angle shifted slightly because this was actually sitting on the bolt. Not ideal when you need it. Also, I'll note this because a lot of people ask about this in forums online and things like that. There is going to be some play here. Yes, see that? It is very, very wiggly. That's okay, that's intentional that's allowed. Now with the new sprockets in place, we can go ahead and put the rear back together. You can also push apart the brake pad carefully to make sure it gets on even easier and inspect it while you're in there. Make sure that those brake pads are still good. I would also recommend greasing the axles before sliding it in there and buttoning everything up. Then we can go ahead and throw that new chain on. I took the cover off as well just to make it that much easier. Now depending on where you got your chain and how long your chain is, this one is 106 links by the way, you may or may not have this perfectly line up and if you have something more than that, you may need to actually remove some of these. In this case, it's just fine. Yes, it is very loose at this point, but that's because this is all the way forward, so it's as loose as it possibly will get. We will tighten this eventually. Now I can just go ahead and put the master link on. This is a clip style. So we're gonna slide that onto the two ends. We're going to put the little plate on and the clip facing forward so that way it doesn't accidentally catch on anything. Now that we got everything back together, we put the axle on and it is tight, but it's not torqued. That's important because we need to move backwards as we tension the chain. Obviously, as you can see by the image here, it is way too loose. So we need to use our chain adjusters and adjust those. Then we can go ahead and torque the rear axle. This is 44 foot pounds. So I've got about 100 miles on the bike now and I'd say it's thoroughly broken in and it feels so much better. Let this be a PSA. Do as I say, not as I do. I should not have let it get as bad as it was. The fact that after one ride, after tightening it up and it got that loose and that rattly, that was pretty dangerous. That could have gotten to the point where the chain broke or fell off and then worse, it could hit me in the leg or hit the engine case and then I'd really be having a bad time. Now with what I have on the bike, I can continue to have a good time.